I bought an ICOM 705, a neat little radio with a neat little backpack. I'm going to show you what's in my radio kit, including something I 3D printed. Coming up. Hey everyone, welcome to the shack. I am Ria, call sign N2RJ, and I'm a ham radio operator. I talk about ham radio and other radio related hobbies and activities on this channel. So if you do like the content, please help the channel out by hitting like and subscribe. It keeps things growing, moving along, and bringing more content just for you. So let's just get out and say it, okay? The IC705 is the quintessential YouTuber's radio. After all, YouTubers love parks in the air, going outside, and portable things. It also has a prepper flavor to it, as you can bug out with it and take it with you. Self-contained in the LC192 backpack, it should be your companion in the zombie apocalypse. What I'm not going to be doing here is a review of the radio, other than to say that I like the radio and the concept of it. What I am going to show you is how I organize my backpack and the reason why I have certain things that I've really not seen in other videos. So first, let's talk power. Every radio pretty much needs power. To start with, I did get two batteries with the radio. One of them is the included standard capacity battery pack, and the other is a high capacity battery pack. I feel this is important because it helps me keep the radio self-contained in one piece for a quick deployment. The downside of this is that you'll only get five watts out of the radio with them. So to fix this, I actually got a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. I haven't really done any extensive testing on this and I bought it primarily because it was cheap, but I still had good reviews. So I figured even if it bombed, not literally, that I would still get my money's worth. So far I've used it to work 10 watts single sideband, SSB and CW without any really any issue. Two thumbs up. The battery I still have to properly connectorize, but it has F2 terminals and I can just slap on a spade to power pole and call that a day. I also got a standalone charger, which I'm going to add power poles to. This one was cheap enough and actually didn't exhibit much RFI. One thing I did invest in was a good compact switching power supply. And I decided to go with the Pro Audio Engineering KX33. Now, I, I kind of agonize much about this decision. I figured I could just keep, you know, I could just go with a cheap 12 volt generic brick and then I'd find on Amazon and then take my chances with it. But the radio is pretty expensive. I didn't really want to risk it. So this power supply has a good reputation and good reviews. And more importantly, the company seems to place emphasis on clean output, especially on HF. There are a lot of garbage power supplies out there that will completely wipe out the band and be completely unusable. Some might even fry a radio. This one actually has published specs and an explanation of their philosophy and design. With this power supply, you do have to get the adapter from 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter to 5.5 by 2.5 millimeter, but they sell that in a pigtail form factor. Still in the power supply department, I decided to get a cigarette lighter cord. Now it's kind of funny, I was having this discussion with a few people on Twitter and Phil Karn, Brett Glass and a few others got into it about various power standards. It's amazing how the smoke in your car apparatus became the global standard for DC power, even extending beyond the automobile in some cases, right? The Anderson power pole connector may be ubiquitous in ham radio, but outside of ham radio, it's still not universal. It's interesting because I have cigarette lighter cords for everything, my drones, a power inverter, and even my laptop, but I have nothing really Anderson power pole except my flex radio. Before USB-C became the standard in MacBooks, I used to always get a car adapter. Even if you completely drain your other batteries, you can just plug into your vehicle and get power. Anyway, this is one is just a straight DC plug with an LED on it, so you can see that the outlet's active. Same applies as the KX33 power supply. Use the adapter from 2.1 mil to 2.5 millimeter. With both of these power adapters, even if you don't use a radio plugged in, you can charge a battery. 
So if you're on the way somewhere, you can top up if you forgot to charge at home. Now let's talk antennas. I actually got the Comet HFJ350M toy box ordered from my friend Jim Gifford at KM4MPF sales. I got also a few adapters for BNC SO239, so that works well. I also got the wind camp bracket so I can use the radio outside of the backpack. It works reasonably well. I decided I wanted to attach it to the side of the backpack on the included plate. I wasn't real happy with the arrangement of putting a lip mount on that piece of plastic on the side of the backpack. So I decided I would go with their other suggestion to put nylon straps and strap the antenna that way. Two things immediately became apparent without, without approach. The first is that it would keep the antenna too close to the backpack. It might detune it slightly, but the main concern is that it just jams up close and didn't seem to work properly. The other one is that the clips I get from the stores didn't really also seem to fit properly. I looked for commercially available brackets and there really weren't that many that I was satisfied with. So I turned to Thingiverse where I found one that I could easily 3D print. I ended up printing this set of brackets. So in 3D printing, we actually use a variety of plastics, but mostly three types. PLA or polylactic acid, which is made from sugarcane, ABS, acrylonitrile, butadiene, styrene, and of late, PETG, polyethylene, terephthalate with glycol, which is similar to the plastic used to make soda bottles. I used PETG as I found PLA to be a bit too brittle and I wanted it to have a bit of tentile strength. Printing with APS is problematic as it generates all sorts of fumes and is finicky to print, but if you can print that, why not? In my quest for bolts and nuts to fasten the backpack, I couldn't really find any at Lowe's or Home Depot, but I did find at Costello's Ace Hardware in Lincoln Park, New Jersey. Um, they always have a lot of hard to find stuff. I got stainless steel nuts, bolts, and washers. I used metric because the print set used metric and I was lazy to convert. For the radial wire, I just carry a spool of wire and adjust it to length, but I'm working on a better solution in the form of a retractable wire winder. Look for it, and I'll probably feature in a future episode. For the tuner, when I do have to use a tuner, I did get the MAT705 tuner, and that'll tide me over until I get the A8705. And of course, I got a bunch of antenna adapters, because why not? I found a local electronics store, Wayne Electronics, that has some electronic accessories and such, including BNC Right Angle, just what the doctor ordered. They're well liked by ham clubs. I see Farallon has a sign up there and a few others. And I like them too. So if you're in the area, why not stop by? They didn't pay me to say this, mind you. I just like the fact that there are still a few of these stores around. Anyway, as you can see, my backpack is pretty well prepared for new radio adventures. There will be more to come. And I'll also be using this radio to do some testing for the Tesla ham radio install. So stay tuned. I do have some antennas left over from when I operated portable and more, such as a buddy pole and a super antennas MP1. So these will be making their appearance from time to time. Probably some POTA. Well, you know what? That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And until next time, this is N2RJ saying keep on hemming.